Several U.S. restaurant chains have been the recipient of protests and boycotts since the start of the Israel-Hamas war more than four months ago. Now some of those companies say they're feeling the impact on their bottom line. Over the last several weeks, McDonald's, Starbucks, Burger King and Taco Bell have released their latest quarterly earnings reports, each pointing to the Middle East war and related consumer backlash for sluggish sales. Yum Brands, the parent company behind Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and KFC, missing Wall Street estimates. The company's Pizza Hut division was the target of boycotts after Pizza Hut Israel posted an Instagram story appearing to show employees handing out free pizza to Israeli soldiers. CEO David Gibbs discussing the earnings results with investors. During the quarter, top-line sales were impacted by the conflict in the Middle East region with varying degrees of impact across markets in the Middle East, Malaysia, and Indonesia. This represented a low single-digit headwind to Yum's overall fourth quarter same-store sales growth. While McDonald's saw its total global sales figures grow last quarter, it was short of estimates. The company's CEO, Chris Kemchinski, wrote in a post on LinkedIn in January, several markets in the Middle East and some outside the region are experiencing a meaningful business impact due to the war and associated misinformation that is affecting brands like McDonald's. This is disheartening and ill-founded. McDonald's faced boycotts from Muslim-majority countries after its Israeli franchisee offered discounts to IDF soldiers. Kemchinski spoke on what he believes is McDonald's place amid the war that has now passed 130 days. McDonald's has always been a beacon in our communities around the world, led by local franchisees who work tirelessly to serve and support. The ongoing impact of the war on these franchisees' local businesses is disheartening and ill-founded. As our value state, McDonald's will always proudly open our doors to everyone. Like McDonald's, Starbucks, too, had an increase in same-store sales, short of estimates in a quarter that saw protesters boycotting the brand due to a social media post shared just two days after the start of the war. Starbucks Workers United, a union representing hundreds of workers, shared a post on X stating solidarity with Palestine. Though the message was taken down within 40 minutes, Starbucks said it led to more than 1,000 customer complaints and vandalism at stores. The company sued the union for trademark infringement over its logo. In December, Starbucks responded to criticism and rumors about its stance on the war, saying, Our position remains unchanged. Starbucks stands for humanity. We condemn violence, the loss of innocent life, and all hate and weaponized speech. Despite false statements spread through social media, we have no political agenda. We do not use our profits to fund any government or military operations anywhere and never have. CEO Luxman Narasimhan telling Starbucks investors that the impact of the war was being felt on stores across the globe. We saw negative impacts to our business in the Middle East. Second, events in the Middle East also had an impact in the U.S., driven by misperceptions about our position. And just this week, Kobza, the CEO of Restaurant Brands International, parent company of Burger King, Tim Hortons, and Popeyes, saying business in a dozen countries was hurt by the war. We're not going to speculate on how long this headwind may last. In, in the impacted countries, our entire focus is on the safety of our team members and our partners. With restaurant CEOs not forecasting when business affected by the war will pick up again, their companies are looking toward innovation to bump sales figures. McDonald's, for instance, is planning to open more than 2,100 new U.S. restaurants this year. Burger King is set to remodel 400 locations, turning some into the sizzle prototype as a refresh of the brand. Starbucks, thinking outside coffee, is adding new food items. And Taco Bell is ready to release one new product every five weeks, unveiling this year's upcoming offerings during an event in Las Vegas during the Super Bowl. Restaurants are looking for more ways to build hype while facing an uncertain outlook.